check just like I said a second ago uh, but let's go ahead and take a look here I just wanted to pop in and say hi before we got started hi all right welcome back everyone excited to be here again with you today uh, we do have another watch on the table here you might see that we have actually changed our setup a little bit very excited about that uh, this will be more of a, a permanent setup for us to, to film at so I'm very jazzed uh, we do have today a Young Hans with, for us under review. Uh, I'm very excited to check this one out. It's one I haven't actually gotten a chance to wear a whole lot. Uh, it is, you know, a fairly dressier piece, uh, but one that, you know, I find to be kind of unique. I really haven't seen another example of this one. I'm sure they're out there, but uh, when I found this one, when I was, you know, hunting, I uh, was smitten from the get-go, so I had to grab it. And we're going to take a gander at it today together, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, I didn't start off thinking that I was going to get a vintage Young Hans. Uh, I actually was really kind of smitten with the modern or contemporary Young Hans that are out right now. The Max Bill designs, I'll throw up a few different pictures of those. Uh, I still have my eyes on those. Uh, you know, I can't decide in terms of those. Like, they're a little... The price range is something that is not an impulse buy for me. Uh, so I've been kind of contemplating it. I'm also a little unsure about whether I want this black dial one. Or this silver dial one. I'm also unsure if I just want the numerals or if I want the indices, uh, the batons. Uh, and so I'm a little bit waffling there. So I will pick up one of those eventually. But for now, I did find this fairly affordable vintage piece on eBay maybe, you know, several months ago at this point. It's been a while. So I'm not going to really kind of bore you with a huge history lesson on Young Hans. Uh, I do think it's a storied company, a company that's worth delving into in terms of their history. But there's plenty you can find in other sources. They were established in 1861, so they got a lot of pedigree behind them. This particular piece was made in 1966. So it's pretty, you know, a seasoned, uh, but fairly spry for its age, I'll say. Uh, we can take a look and see that it is gold-plated. Uh, that's something that you know really drew me drew my eye. I do like gold. I feel like gold is making a little bit of a comeback So, you know being part of that little zeitgeist that might be happening. I feel like gold is timeless You know, it's been something that's been attractive for millennia So it makes sense that it still is I definitely like gold This one is gold plated. It does have a stainless steel snap-on case back the movement is uh, the young Han 620 movement from my research and from the original listing uh, this uh, has a 17 joule movement. Uh, it is a manual wine, as you might expect, you know, considering what you'll see is the thinness of the watch. Pretty, you know, stubby baton indices uh, with uh, some pointers on them as well. Uh, pointer at the noon going down towards the dial, the center of the dial. Pointers away towards the rim of the dial uh, on the hour markers. Cushion style case. Very short lugs, I have to say. If you want to kind of run down the deets right now, uh, we have a 28 millimeter top to bottom, and so that's kind of considering the very top of the little square or cushion, if you will, to the bottom of the square. Uh, 28.5 width. I didn't include the crown in that measurement. The crown does add just a smidge to the width there. 8.5 millimeters tall, and a lot of that actually is tied up with the domed acrylic crystal that you can see. I'll definitely include some footage there so you can see, you know, just how thick that dome is. I think that is actually pretty attractive. There is some really nice warping that you can see towards the edge of the dial uh, if you are kind of observing that. And it is a very lightweight watch, 27 grams total. Disappears on the wrist, I have to say. I threw this one on the time grapher. Uh, it's not really performing like pretty well, to be very, very honest. Uh, it was ostensibly serviced before it came to me, like somewhat recently, probably in about 2021 at some point, maybe early 2021. But 
Uh, when I actually put it on the time graph, I'm kind of getting results all over the place. Sometimes as low as like negative nine seconds loss per day. Sometimes as high as like 40 something seconds a day. Uh, so it's a little bit all over the place. Definitely like wearable though, I have to say. If it's under an, a minute, I usually feel, feel pretty safe wearing a watch overall. Uh, so it is definitely something I would wear out and about if I felt like it. I haven't had a whole lot of occasion to wear it lately. It is a fairly dressy piece being, you know, gold. Uh, and like really having that very rich toned yellow gold uh, and this bright of course sunburst dial I love if you look really closely on this dial you can see that there is some really nice patina on the dial too some aging there that I find very fetching uh, and it's something that I just really enjoy I enjoy this old school Young Hans logo as well and so there's a lot to like here I don't know if it's really showing up super well, but you can see the Made in Germany uh, there on the bottom of the dial. I'll definitely encourage you to take a look there. Overall, I really, this is one of those pieces that I find, you know, it just, just really caught my eye. This really feels like a collectible. I really, like, it's one that I'm not going to wear super, super often. One that is not, you know, super historically significant, but it has a lot of history behind it. I enjoy having it. It gives me pleasure to have it in my hand, Marie Kondo style. Uh, it does give me joy. Uh, and so uh, this is why I actually keep hold of this one, even though it's not one I really wear very often. I do I, I do plan on wearing it quite a bit, like uh, when I have the occasion. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's weathered, it's grizzled. It's got, you know, almost 60 years of life on this earth. So it's definitely something I can respect and, you know, get a lot of pleasure out of. It does have a nice little gold hand there. I don't know if these other hands are totally original or not. Uh, they are, they look like stainless that is just kind of really weathered over time, perhaps. Uh, but, you know, it's hard to say, honestly, as far as that goes without getting it appraised by a watchmaker and really taking it apart. Like, uh, I can't really say. There does seem to be some loom on there from way back when, although the loom is basically a non-factor at this point. Has this watch kind of wet my whistle for Young Hans? I have to say it has. Uh, this is definitely going to be, you know, the first of maybe a few Young Hans watches I hope to pick up. I actually just am looking forward to picking up a German watch in general, another one. Uh, besides Young Hans, I also am very interested in Zen. I have not grabbed a Zen as yet, but I do have my eye on a few different models. Uh, so I'm definitely going to, like, really kind of keep Germany in mind in terms of manufacturers uh, in the future. So what do you think? Do you like Young Hans? Do you have a Young Hans? Do you have one of those Max Bills I had my eye on? Uh, I'd love to hear in the comments if you do, if you have any experience with this particular brand. Or if you just have any comments on this particular piece, I'd love to hear those as well. Does it strike your fancy? Is it too old school? I'm sure it is for some of you, for sure. Uh, but yeah, thanks so much for watching here today with me. Thanks for being here with me. I hope you have a rad day wherever you are, uh, and I will see you next time.